Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I bring you another in the 24 Tags of Christmas series that I do each year. This is the third day. We're going to do a little really simple Copic coloring. This is one of those really fast ones. It's also going to serve as a gift card holder if you want to use it that way. But each year I do these series and then I give them all away. So please be sure to leave comments here on YouTube and over on my blog and you may qualify to win. The winner will be announced on my blog after the week is over. The stamp set for today is called Dairy Christmas, which is quite hilarious. Art Impressions is known for their little punny sentiments that they put with everything. And what I've done is made some really simple, super simple matchbook tags. And the measurements for these, the folded tag is three and a half by three and a half with a little half inch at the bottom for the fold over and I'm going to show you how I constructed them but I just stamped the images in some Copic friendly ink and I'm going to color with just one color of Copic. Yes, one color. I recommend choosing a color that's going to match the sentiment so I picked an R37 which matches the ink that I use so whatever red ink you use find a Copic that comes pretty close and then just color some of the highlighted portions of the image. In this stamp set in particular, they're all wearing some sort of hats and scarves and that kind of thing, and I'm just going to highlight those items. I'm not doing any shading, I'm not getting fancy. I have a friend who is really into collecting Copics now. She's been following me for a long time. She's a, a dear friend of mine, but she doesn't do any shading. She doesn't do any at all. And she has a collection of just very simple mar marker colors and loves to just do some straight up coloring like this. So she inspired me to come up with something that was really easy. Now that little fold at the bottom, which I made mine a half inch, you can make it three quarters of an inch, whatever size you need to for your tags, really is going to depend on the stamp set size that you use. But I'm just going to color that, that tab and I've put a piece of black paper over there just so I have something to color against. I'll have a little bit of that red line across the back so that it will uh, it will show up on the back just a little bit, but it'll be a nice straight line, so it'll work just perfect. And with each one of the images, I'm just going to go through and color just the highlighted portions of the image. This is another one of those that once you get the stamping done, your kids can help you color. You can even do these in colored pencils and get the kids to color things in for you. It'd be a great way to make presents for all the um, kids at school or if they do things for teachers. This is something very easy that they can help with around the house while you're getting ready for Christmas. Just get some stamping finished for them so that they can complete the rest of the project. So these little guys, these little eggs, which are so flippin' cute. Why has nobody ever made eggs that are dressed up for Christmas before? I have no idea because it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> and I'm getting my little eggs all colored in with their little scarves and their little Santa Claus hats. And then I will again do that panel at the bottom. This is a row of chickens that are hanging out. Um, I, their expressions are so funny. I love their expressions. I was trying to decide whether or not to color their beards in, their little red things that hang below their, their beaks. And what I decided to do was run around first and color their scarves and their hats because that would tell me whether or not I had enough red on here or not or whether having that other little bit colored would get confusing visually because the red tells you on this particular type of coloring where you're just going to color a simple portion of the image, it says this is the Christmas part of the image. I'm just coloring the outfits they're wearing so if I were to color in those two little red bits, that might be too much. So doing this part first at least helped me to see whether or not I needed that to be colored in. And what I decided was I needed those lights colored in. I needed a little bit more red spread around here. So I thought, let me jump in and do the lights. And as I did them, I realized I definitely didn't need to color in those little... And I know somebody's going to tell me in the, in the comments down below what those little things are called. <laughs> a little thing hanging down from his chin. And, uh, but I decided I did not need to color those in. And again, color that panel along the very bottom. And if you do a couple layers of that color, just keep going back and forth, then it gets pretty even and pretty simple, straight up coloring. 
Now this little guy, pretty funny, he's given birth, or she, I, should, I guess I should say she has given birth, unless it was the male chicken that has decided to be helpful and sit on the, the newborns, <laughs> um, has given birth to Christmas ornaments, which I think is a really cute idea. I've never seen a stamp set, I don't think, that has done this. It seems like there's stamp sets that have been done with every possible image out there, but apparently not, because this, is, this was a new one to me and made me laugh. So, pretty hilarious. And I'm just going to go around and, and, again, simply color these in. You can get fancy and try to shade them, try and leave highlights on them to make them look like they're shiny, etc. But for simple tags like this, it works really great. Now here's what it looks like folded up, and I wanted to show you how I'm going to put these together. So I'm going to take a piercer. This is a Tim Holtz tonic. Uh, I think it's called a craft pick. I wouldn't call it a piercer. That would be too easy. And I went through all of it because I want to make sure that this thing tucks in but doesn't get stopped by the little brad that I'm going to put in there. So I'm just going to take a little circle punch and pop that out so that when I put the tab in here, the, the, or the little brad in here, the tab stays in there without you know, kind of getting in the way of that. It's, it's going to close up nicely and close up nice and securely. And I'll do that with each one of these. The pad I'm using is a very old one. I don't even think it's available anymore. It was from Basil from eons ago. But you can use anything that you can pierce into. There's a lot of sentiments in here, so you can add sentiments on the inside as well. Again, using the red and black combination here. And I can go round and color the the eggs. I like the fact that they're sort of peeping in from this side. Get it? Peeps? Ha ha. Punny, punny. There we go. But when I use art impression stamps, they tend to make me think punny thoughts because their sentiments are so full of punniness as well. So it's easy to play their game. So I'm just going to color in that. And you can either put images on the inside and sentiments on the inside, or you could save that for your note, your to and from, and who's going to get the gift that this is going to be attached to. You can see how easily these open and close since we have that little closure worked out just perfectly with a little hole punch. And you can do a whole bunch of these pretty quickly once you get your stamping done, especially if you use a Misty to do some mass produced stamping, get your sizes all set up and everything and stamp away and then just do some quick coloring while you're sitting and watching TV and get all your tags finished. These also make great gift card holders, like I said earlier. This one has a little PetSmart card in it, and you can make sure your sizes are right by checking it out beforehand before you get all your stamping and folding done. And these are really fun to make, so please enjoy the rest of the ones in the series. If you're watching this the day this goes live, then only the three previous ones are available to you. There's a 2014 and 2015 playlist if you'd like to see last year's or the year before's. And the links to those are also in the description down below in case you can't click on annotations. Be sure to leave comments in the doobly-doo down below as well as over on the blog to qualify to potentially win a tag. And I will talk to you guys later. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.